I figure let's start talking about the roster a little bit, Jeremy. And specifically, I want to talk about the transfers that have come in. 15 transfers have been added to this roster. And that is not something that we have seen over the years in college football. And it is now the new normal. And I just kind of wanted to go through them line by line and talk about what kind of impact you think these guys are going to have on this football team. I'm going to start with a guy um, who I really haven't heard a lot of talk about. Uh, he comes in with probably the best resume of anyone who's come in through the transfer portal, but we're not really sure what you're going to get out of him. And that's Seven Banks. Um, yeah. The transfer in from Ohio State. Uh, this guy has been a, a starter for Ohio State. The question is, what kind of player is he now coming back from an injury? What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I think if he's healthy, I think he's a playmaker in the secondary. You cut on his highlight tape season, catching interceptions in big-time games when they made their college football playoff run. Uh, he was a big part of that, and he was making plays during that run. So uh, I think his biggest, you know, Achilles Hill, it has been his injury history. Um, you know, so going to LSU, I think going forward, I, I think he's going to be a guy, if he's healthy, uh, he's definitely going to be in rotation. For one, you don't have the depth in that room, so you got to need every hand you can get to, to help you out that way. But also, I think he's a playmaker, so I think he's going to get – Ample times to go out there and make plays, and if he's healthy, I think he can do so. So he came in as a pretty highly thought-of recruit to Ohio State, played in six games as a true freshman, was a, kind of a special teams guy as a sophomore. He played in every game for a team that won the Big Ten, but didn't have a, a huge role on that team. 2020, the COVID year, was when he became a starter as a junior, started every game that Ohio State played, uh, made seven tackles in the national championship game, led Ohio State in past breakups uh, as a as a junior, uh, made the interception to seal the game against Clemson in the semifinals, was an honorable mention all Big Ten player. And then as a senior, uh, he started five times, but he missed uh, five games with injury last year at Ohio State. And the question is kind of what kind of player can he be? This is a secondary that's loaded on experience at everywhere but LSU, essentially. And Seven Banks is a huge part of that. So do you see him being a starter on this team? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. I think you're looking at a world where probably he can start on one side and you got Converse on the other side. Uh, not many more proven people. I think you got a couple of nickel guys. There's a, to me, there's a bunch of nickel guys you can put. I, I feel comfortable with Fouché, uh, Brooks right there, and then even Sage Ryan. But I, I think on the outside, I, I think you, he definitely is probably going to be a guy that you probably think will, will be the starter. I think uh, the safest bet as to a guy that's going to be in there early, often, and make a huge impact on this team as far as the transfers go is Jark Bernard Converse. Uh, I don't think I realized. I mean, I knew that he was coming. I knew he was from Oklahoma State. I knew he was an All-Big Ten player. I knew all of that. I didn't realize he went to Evangel. He's, he's from Shreveport. <laughs> yeah. He went to Evangel, 6'1", 205. Um, he's, he's good. I mean, this yeah. is a guy who has started 47 straight games for Oklahoma State. Um, you know, he's made 216 tackles. Uh, 23 pass breakups. This guy is a veteran. He is a proven commodity at the big-time D1 level. I think he steps in and becomes a, an in, instant guy that helps you a ton on defense. Yeah, and I, I think for Coach Kelly, was, I think that's a big get, especially early on in the transfer portal process uh, for this team. Uh, find a guy with this much experience. He's obviously you know, made, made all-conference honors, and uh, he's played a ton of big games. And I think you know coming to LSU, coming back to the state, of Louisiana, he's going to be a guy I think who's going to be eager to want to prove that he belongs in this conference. And uh, he's another guy that I'm, I'm pumping my LSU sunshine and rainbows right now. But I, I think I think Converse can go out there and be a guy on the outside. Probably not be, you know, a, a Thorpe Award winner, but he can go out there and make plays and be a guy that you can trust to take away some number one receivers. Last year in Bedlam, the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game, he had nine tackles, broke up two passes. Oklahoma's ranked 10th in the country. He's played against the best. He stands that test, and he's he's going to be a huge factor on this team. Uh, the next guy on this list is Jaden Daniels. We don't need to go too deep into mm -hmm. this. I mean, we know this is a guy that's, that's a multi-year starter at a Pac-12 school that was looking for a new shot, and he is the one guy who gives you a little bit of a different skill set here when he comes in. He's a, a dynamic runner. He's fast. Like, he can really go, um, but he's got his work cut out for him, I think, to be the starting quarterback. Yeah, I think for me, he's going to, you know, I know that freshman year, everyone's going to go back to that, but, you know, that was a couple seasons ago, so I think he he's going to have to get back to that level of play, and he has the weapons on the outside. I think that's why, you know, it's a two-way street. LSU had interest in him, and he had interest in coming here, so uh, he's got to have everything in front of him. I think Coach Denbrox, you, you saw what he did in his offense last year uh, with having a quarterback that can use his leg. So I know there's going to be stuff that they want to implement. So I think it's going to be up to Jaden to see how accurate he can be with the football down the field with all the weapons he's got to have. And uh, if he can do that, then he can really be a threat. But right now, I just haven't seen that consistently enough from him. 
we'll see when we get out there for sure, kind of how he, he stacks up with those guys. Um, I'm curious to see what Makai Wingo's role is on this team. I have very often lumped him in with this really strong defensive front as a key depth piece on this team. He was a, a all-SEC freshman at Missouri. Um, as I dug a little deeper in, in looking at, at what he did last year, earlier this morning, a significant amount of what he did last year statistically was against non-conference teams. Um, you look at at his bio, and you look at a guy who, yeah, he played in all eleven games, um, had three starts against you know North Texas, Vanderbilt, and then A and M. Twenty-seven tackles, had a touchdown, uh, an interception return for a touchdown against North Texas. Um, had a couple tackles against Central Michigan, had a big game against North Texas with four tackles and an interception, had his best game against Army. That's a lot of non-conference teams that he was beaten up on. He was a freshman, so I don't expect a freshman to come in and dominate on the defensive line. And I think he will be a really key piece, but now a little bit more prove it to me um, for, for Makai Wingo is a lot of what he was doing against North Texas and Army. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think for him, it, it's a really, really a room where he's walking into with a ton of guys yeah. with a bunch of depth. And some guys who are going to get a lot of NFL consideration. So um, I expect him to be a cog in the machine. I don't think he's going to walk in, you know, uh, year one at LSU and become a starter. But um, I think he's a guy who can come in the rotation and really find a way to help out. He can do multiple things on the line. You can line him up in multiple positions. But I think on this defensive line, he's probably going to be a guy that's going to be in the rotation. Let's talk about the two guys that are always mentioned together because they came in on the offensive line. Traymond Shorts comes in from from East Tennessee. He's a mauler. He's 6'4", 330 pounds. He's a huge dude that will play an interior spot on the offensive line. Miles Frazier, a little longer and leaner. It's 6'5", 305, coming in from Florida International. Um, but the inclination is that these guys uh, are going to be big keys to LSU's offensive line. I heard Brian Kelly talk at the Alumni Association uh, dinner last week and said that they brought in two guys who were SEC ready. That was the mm -hmm. term he used when talking to the Alumni Association on, on Thursday night. So... I'll take him at his word for that. We'll see if they're out there in the first game. Yeah. But do you think these two guys factor in on the interior from day one? I mean, I, I definitely think they fit the mold. These are two really big, strong kids, really athletic kids, especially Frazier. And I think uh, Shorts is a, a really, really strong kid who I thought they would, you know, give some uh, consideration to at the center position. But uh, I think for right now, putting those guys at guard and tackle, um, I definitely see a world where both of those guys could be starters. I uh, know we, we kind of feel the Campbell wire thing, but I think Frazier's going to be in the mix there. And I think, you know, we're, we're getting the you know, leadership from Coach Davis and Coach Kelly, what they've done with offensive linemen in the past. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if either one of those guys are starters and helping this team out a ton this fall. Yeah, I, um, I, th I think that they're comfortable with Campbell and Wire. I think those guys are going to be the starting tackles. The interior, I think, is up for grabs at this point. That'll be one of the first things that I look at when we go out to practice later this week is, okay, what order are these linemen working in and who's working at center? who's rotating at the guard spots. They're, they're healthy now, so it's it's a matter of seeing kind of who takes those first reps. Early in camp, it's common for older players to, to go through those reps, and you've got the same position coach, so there are guys out there that understand the way that uh, that, that practice is going to be run, but I think it's, it's certainly worth looking at for sure how those guys handle things in the middle. Um, and you look at the guys who are going to be grouped together because they're coming from the same school, and that's Greg Books and Joe Fouché. Uh, again, these two guys are proven commodities. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any doubt that they can go out there and, and play at an SEC level and, and a, a big-time SEC level. I think your inclination would be say, hey, these guys are at Arkansas. Like, <laughs> why? The Ar but Arkansas was better than LSU last year. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know which way to, to say it. I mean, they're coming out of a, a very, very dark period. But Arkansas was more competitive than LSU and beat LSU last year. So to, to, to immediately point to everybody on Arkansas's roster and go, well, we got all Americans. We're a national championship type <laughs> program. Well, no, well, we're a 500 program at this point. So I'll take yeah. the guys who have been on a team last year that was better than what LSU had. Yeah, look, I think I, I had to hold back on my Arkansas slander because I never thought there'd be a world where I live in where LSU defensive back took their talents to Arkansas. Yeah. But, yeah, that's happening now. So we got to put a little more respect on Arkansas. But I, I think, you know, both of these kids are going to be, you know, guys who kind of fit that more nickel role, more safety role, guys who can kind of be in, in the alley and, and kind of make plays there. And I think, you know, both of those guys can do that. If you if you, ha if you had a world where both of those guys are in the alley and you got Jay War playing deep high, you know, I think both of those guys can really do a great job making plays there. And we've seen them do that in the SEC, which I think can't go understated. And so I think both of these guys will be uh, heavy in the rotation this year in the secondary. 33 starts for Joe Fouché up there at Arkansas, which is obviously a very, very significant amount of football that he played for them. 
same type deal. All these guys have played so much football. Uh, it's just not like you're bringing in guys who you got to teach the game. They, they know the speed of the game. They know what they're doing. I'm curious to see your thoughts on the next guy that I, uh, is on this list is, is Noah Kane. Um, mm -hmm. He came in as a pretty highly thought of recruit. And had a, a pretty good freshman year. Uh, where he, he started late in the season, started three games late. And then as a sophomore, was kind of a feature back up there at Penn State. Then he got hurt as a junior. And the essentially the word out of, of Happy Valley was that he just has not been the same player since he got hurt. And the statistics would kind of back that up. And in, in, uh, in his redshirt sophomore year, he had six starts. And he ran for 334 yards on 105 carries. Just wasn't super productive for them. A new start. He's now another year removed from that injury. Hopefully, he's a guy that can can give you some carries. But you know, do you expect him to be a feature in this offense? Uh, yeah, it's it's so tough to see with the running back position right now because I think there's so many guys. But I think losing Connor, uh, that was a big get to get back uh, for a guy you thought would be getting carries. But I, I think for Noah, uh, I like what he can do in the passing game. I, I think that's a threat where he can bring to this offense catching the ball. Uh, in the flat, catching the ball in the screen game, being a guy that they can depend on to get the ball to in space. Um, as far as a runner, um, I don't know if he's dynamic as guys we've seen in the past, like guys and some of the other runners we've seen, but I think there's a world where he can help this team out in the passing game for sure. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.